to show you guys how to make it. All right, guys, come over here because I want you to be able to hear. Okay. So the first thing you need. Are you filming? Oh, sorry about that. All right. Uh, it says snips. Uh, reds or greens in the big red toolbox. Okay. You're going to have two pieces of metal, eight and a half by eight and a half. Those are for your cheeks. And then you're going to have a piece, one piece of metal for your throat and your heel. That's going to be at least uh, 18 inches long. So the first thing you're going to have to do, you're going to have to figure out how big you, of a piece you need. And this is how you do it. This is how you figure out the heel. All right, so you're going to make a six by six. Very good, thank you. A six by six 90 with two inch throats. Okay, so that means you've got a two inch throat both ways. Okay, six by six. So if six inches is the radius, what is the diameter? Huh? 12. 12. Okay, so pi 3.14, right, times 12 gives you what? Like 37 point four eight. Okay, thirty seven point six eight. Okay. So thirty seven point six eight is one full way around the circle. Now you've got to divide that by 4. Okay, go ahead and divide 37.68 by 4. Huh? 9.42. Okay. Are you done there? No. What do you got to add? Throat. Okay, and how big is your throat? 2 inches. Or... 2 inches on both sides, yeah. so that's actually 4, four inches. Okay, so you're adding four inches to that. All right, so 9.42 plus four inches gives you 13.42 inches. Okay, 0.42 inches is equal to what? In uh, roughly three eighths, right? Roughly three eighths, very good. All right, so now I'm gonna flip the metal over. All right, the Pittsburgh seam goes on the heel and the thro throat, okay? It cannot go on the cheeks. You will never get a Pittsburgh seam on a curved piece, okay? But Mr. Gaskin, the heel is a curved piece. Well, that is true, but it's not curved yet, right? So we're going to start with a flat piece, and we're going to lay it out. Okay, so 13 and 3 eighths, right? Yes? Yeah. All right. So if I have a 6 by 690, this piece of metal has to be how wide? If you have a 6 by 690, 8 inches. Why is it 8 inches? Because you got to add the Pittsburgh seams. Very good. Okay, so it's 8 inches wide. All right, and it's at least 13.42 inches long. All right, so I'm gonna lay out that 13 and 3 eighths. Okay, I've got that 3 eighths mark, 13 and 3 eighths marked. That leaves me with approximately eight or uh, five and three eighths of an inch, three eighths of an inch. Now I told you that you can make the Pittsburgh, I'm, I'm sorry, I told you that you can make the heel and the throat together. All right, how big is the throat? Two, two, four inches. Four inches. two by two, right? So it's four inches total. 
So I'm going to go to that 13.42 inch mark, and I'm going to measure four inches up from that, and I'm going to put another mark. Okay, and that will be what I need for my um, throat. All right, so now I'm going to draw these lines across. I'm going to do all my layout first. I'm going to draw this line across. I'm going to go up and draw the other line across. I'm going to just scribble on that so that I know that I'm not using that piece. Now I'm going to flip it back over because I'm left-handed. All right, the first piece I'm going to lay out is the throat because it's the easiest. Okay, so it's four inches wide. All right, I've got a one by one notch. So I'm gonna mark one and I'm gonna mark three. All right, and then I'm also gonna mark where I'm folding it. So I'm gonna mark it exactly in the center, two inches. Now I'm gonna draw these lines all the way across. All right, so now I've got those lines marked. Next thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna to come to the right side of my 13.42 inch mark. I'm gonna put a mark at one inch, then I'm gonna go back to the base, and I'm gonna mark one inch out. Then I'm gonna draw these lines all the way across. All right, so all the lines vertically are all drawn, okay? The only two lines that we still have to draw are going this way, all right? They're the one, one inch lines for the notch outs. All right, and I'm just gonna lay the square across there. I'm gonna mark it at one, and I'm gonna mark it at seven. And I'm gonna draw up through this piece all the way to the end. All right, now I'm ready to cut. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut off the excess. Excess is gone. Next thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna cut off my four inch piece so that I'm not, I don't get confused. At this point, I have my heel and my throat. Now I just need to make my notches. And to do that, I'm gonna to move to my smaller snips because it gives me more control. All right, I don't want to overcut, okay? The idea is never to overcut, it's always to undercut. All right, if you overcut, then you end up with little um, jagged edges. We like to call them meat hooks, okay, because it hooks your fingers and it hurts, All right? How many of you uh, would agree with that? Should be everybody. Yeah, I agree with
All right, so our heel is ready to be Pittsburgh. Now, our throat. Okay, now this line right here is a fold line. Whenever you're working with a fold line in a, in a Pittsburgh seam, you have to notch it. Now normally, I would tell you to use the triangle notchers to notch it. But because this is so small, you'll notice that it's going to use up most of the Pittsburgh seam, right? If I were to actually notch it, right? That Pittsburgh really wouldn't be useful. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna take the snips and you're going to make a small notch, a thinner notch, not a, not a wide angle triangle notch. You're just going to go in to the center, all right, almost like a dovetail notch, but not even as wide as that. You see what I'm doing? You all see that? Okay, you get it? You understand? Okay, you're going to do that on both sides. All right, so now we're gonna set these two pieces aside. The heel and the throat are ready to fold. And um, the next thing that I'm gonna to describe to you is something called dividers. These are used for making a radius. All right, this is the tool that you use to draw your radius. Just like a compass, okay? It spreads apart just like a compass. They're called dividers. Do not call it a compass. Do not call it a compass. All right, this is new tool number one. New tool number one. I'm going to set them aside for the time being. I'm going to go to my eight and a half inch squares, and I'm going to lay them out. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do on both sides, left edge and the top, I'm going to mark a quarter inch out. What this does is it gives me a reference point. Okay, so I've got them laid out. Now, from that six inch or from that quarter inch mark, I'm gonna go six inches over. Okay. And I'm gonna mark it again. Alright, and then I'm gonna rotate this down. I'm gonna do the same thing. Now I'm going to draw these So at this point, I've got something that looks like this, all right? This line can go away, all right, so that you guys don't um, look at it and think it's important, because it's not. All right, this would be how you would make it if it were a square, but that's not what we're making, okay? 
we want to have a reference point here and here. We're going to take the dividers. We're going to set it on that point. You will take your hammer and you'll tap the head of the dividers. All right, so it gives a uh, divot in there. The other side you're going to take and put out on your point where you want to start it. And then you're going to tighten these dividers up. Are you awake there, Jair? No, you're not. I saw them eyes shut. Okay, now that I've got that set, I'm going to take the dividers and I'm just going to roll them up. Alright, you can see how it gives you your radius, right? Alright, now I'm going to take the marker and go over that so you guys can see it. First, you're going to the, to the line. Second, you're going to the edge. Okay, so then you have to loosen these back up. Set your point again and go all the way over to the edge. Just right on the inside of the edge, okay? Tighten them back up. Okay, the reason that you do that is so that uh, this is your quarter inch line for um, for making your uh, uh, connector for your Pittsburgh. All right, so now you've got a secondary line It goes all the way down like that. You guys see it so far? Okay. See the radius? Pretty easy so far, right? No? Okay, now, <clears throat> this is a little bit big, okay? So what you're gonna do, we've gotta cut off, we gotta cut this square down to eight and a quarter by eight and a quarter. Okay, so we're going to mark down here, alright, and I'm going to go ahead and cut it, that way I'm not confused. I'm going to do the same thing on this side. Because your throat's only supposed to be two by two, not two and a quarter by two and a quarter. Do you understand? It's always better to work with a little bit more and cut it off than it is to work with too little. Right, Noah? Struggling over there, buddy? All right, so I'm going to go ahead and cut that. Okay, that's all cut off. So the next thing I need to do, I need to put the um, quarter inch flanges on the inside, on my throat. Mark them real quick and lay them out. All right, the last thing I gotta cut out on this that I can use the Andy snips for is the uh, inside of the throat. Now, I'm gonna take these. I'm gonna do a notch here so that this can be folded. All right, I'm gonna do my one inch by quarter inch notch here. Same thing on this side. Alright, at this point it's starting to take shape and you should start to see what you're working with. 
Okay? Now the only thing we still have to cut is that radius. All right, and you're going to do that with the offset snips. You will not do that with the anti snips because anti snips are used for straight cuts. And you will not do that with the straight snips because they're for short cuts, not long cuts. Okay? So you're going to go ahead. first cheek. You see it? Okay, so I'm going to go ahead, you can pause that. I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing for the second one. 